Are you guys ready for your headline and comic? <laughs> We're excited to bring her up here. She's a uh, They have toured across the country. They've opened up for Louis C.K. Co-host of the Gender Fluids podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Ariel Isaac Norman. I don't know if you just heard the host aggressively, they, them, me. I have never asked anyone to do that. <laughs> corrected himself, corrected himself to they, them. Yeah, I just look pronouny. So I get it. Everyone assumes I'm something. People used to just assume that I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> now everyone assumes that I'm a they, them vegetarian. <laughs> I am actually good with she, her, hers, though. Um, I would prefer that y'all think of me as a woman, even. Except in the bedroom. <laughs> in the bedroom, I need you to see me as a good boy. But <laughs> <laughs> that's none of y'all's business. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. I am polyamorous, so it could be any number of y'all's business by the end of tonight. <laughs> if we're poly, are we poly? Clap if you're polyamorous. <laughs> okay, there's a few people. Okay, like the one guy by himself over here. <laughs> It's not the best PR, but thanks for <laughs> showing up. I see some couples, but it's, you, you always want it to be seven hot lesbians together. <laughs> that isn't it. Now, how long have you been polyamorous? Your whole life. So like from uh, when you were a baby, you came out being like, <laughs> you were sucking on your mom's and your dad's tits. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, that's cool. That You beat me then. I've only been doing it for five years. <laughs> yeah, but I was also raised Mormon, so I might have just kind of circled back to my roots, if anything. <laughs> Whoops. It's been a hero's journey for me. I, it really has been. For those of y'all who don't know, I there was a three-year period of my life from 2015 to 2018 where I got gay married and gay divorced twice. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, thanks for the rights. I <laughs> they were burning a hole in my pocket in here and I really enjoyed them. Yeah, I got gay married in 2015 and then gay divorced in 2016, gay married in 2017, gay divorced in 2018, and then immediately we're polyamorous. <laughs> yeah, so I'm starting to feel like I'm the embodiment of the slippery slope right here. <laughs> I'm just really trying not to fall in love with dogs out there. <laughs> Be a bad look. And by the way, I said I was a good boy in the bedroom, but I don't want you to get to the wrong idea. I'm good boy daddy fluid, okay? I am. <laughs> yeah, I'm a pretty fluid person in general. Oh, and like I said, I don't really care about uh, the pronouns too much, but I do, I do consider myself gendery. You know, I'm visibly gendery. I'm a person of gender, if you will. A POG, <laughs> if you insist. And <laughs> I, I think I'm gender fluid. That's the best word for this. And if you don't know what gender fluid means, it is really simple. Gender fluid just means that if someone's hot enough, I'll change my pronouns to whichever ones they're attracted to. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty good policy, <laughs> in my opinion. I'm also age fluid, if anyone's. <laughs> like, I was dating this trans dude for a while, and he wanted us to be a couple of little twinks together. And yeah, but now I have a girlfriend again, so we're back to his 40 spice, 40 spice, strange mood. Uh, by the way, do y'all know what twinks are? Do you know what twinks are, sir? You do? What are they? Okay. <laughs> of course I know. Yeah, okay, that's what, that, cause, okay, so bears are the big hairy men, and then twinks are the skinny hairless ones. So yeah, he and I are twinks. So, so you know. Okay, good, yeah, because you're foreign, so y'all are chill. <laughs> oh, I found a lot of straight men know, you're probably bi anyway, or gay or something. I'm not sure what you are. Like so you're, yeah. <laughs> At first I thought this was a straight couple, then I heard your voice, and I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> There's some estrogen in there or something, but like 50% or so of straight men at least have some idea what twinks are. They'll say something like, oh, it's the little gay boys. <laughs> <laughs> I kept wondering, like, how do so many straight men kind of know? And then I realized it's because straight men watch so much porn. Yeah, at some point, these straight men have just clicked on every category. You know? 
I can just I can just imagine the night these men's lines be like, twinks. What is that? Is that is that Asian twins? No. It's butt stuff again. Anyway, I know I'm joking about uh, gender fluidity, and I just want to make sure everyone here knows it is a real and valid concept. It's important that you know that because, like, I don't know how to change a tire or a diaper, so I will. <laughs> I do need to switch back and forth sometimes. <laughs> all good with that. And I do. I know, by the way, I could because I'm gender fluid. I could get they do there, and that's how some people do this. But I I'll let y'all in on a little secret tonight. Um, they them there was originally a joke from the queer community, okay? We were just trying to get everyone to figure out which there was which, finally. <laughs> it's just a literacy stunt that took off. I mean, it's been successful. If you think about it, like five to 10 years ago, most people in this country didn't know what a pronoun was. <laughs> now, everyone has strong opinions about them. <laughs> I'm just still trying to figure out how we can drum up a culture war around past participles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For anyone not laughing at that, but it's probably because this country's education system hasn't went downhill, it's gone downhill. testosterone curious you know I will say I think about it all the time should I take testosterone is it anyone else here testosterone curious <laughs> none of the boys even want to transition to men <laughs> but ladies you should be testosterone curious too okay would you not like to be warm for once in your lives <laughs> I want to be warm I would love to try out the confidence of a man. The unearned confidence of men. That seems righteous. And also, I just would like to be strong. It would be nice to be strong. You know, I work out every day, and this is all we can get. Well, thanks, that's so cute, but that's low body fat. That's not muscle. That's the thing, it's like, it would be nice to be strong. Like, any of the men in here could take me, easily. Any of these slovenly loser men could <laughs> easily take me. Well, I'm just, I'm not gonna take testosterone. I just can't do it, okay? Because my big thing is like, I don't wanna go bald. So, I don't, I'm just into my dad's bald and it's just no amount of gender affirmation is worth losing the hair. I like, no offense to you bald men out here, but I'm gonna be bald with no dick. <laughs> so, I don't think that's a great combo. So, I'm not gonna do that. Also, my other big fear about taking testosterone is like, what if I started taking it and then I got funnier? <laughs> <laughs> we just can't have that. <laughs> so, I don't know. No, but I do have to, I, I have decided actually that I do wanna get top surgery. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get double D's. So that's where we're. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a fun? <laughs> yeah. Will y'all donate to that GoFundMe? Thank you. Yeah. The, the GoFundMe will say top surgery, and if you don't read the body, that's on you. I th I'm kidding, I don't want, I don't want big boobs. I don't, I like, I like having small boobs. Sorry to hurt your feelings, sir. I like having <laughs> I like them being small, but I am just a little bit, you know, it's, it's curious to me that so many people are cutting their boots off now, you know? Like, I get it if you're a trans dude, you, you know, that makes sense. But a lot of non-binary people are cutting their boots off. A lot of they thems are doing it. I've even seen some she-they's getting rid of them. And to me, I'm like, well, if everybody is so non-binary, how come no one's cutting one boob off, say? <laughs> Yeah. How come none of the non-binary dudes ever get boobs added on? You never see that. It's hard to take these people seriously. You know? Like, I'll, when I see Demi Lovato give one boob to Sam Smith, then I'm on board. 
And then I want to see them, and then I want them to make a new music video together where they hug. <laughs> That'll be a beautiful non-binary moment. y'all but i love boobs so i'm kind of just a little bit like what are we doing with yeah clap for boobs so does anybody know what we're doing with all the boobs are we throwing them away could we not at the very least put them all in a big room and charge by the hour for like a scrooge mcduck type i would do that a boob escape room? <laughs> Some kind of boob land. I'm just saying we could, we could work with this. Like I, I do, like the truth is I do feel like a dude in a chick's body. Like that's the realest truth for me. I just don't want to change my body to match that. Because it's like, yeah, I feel like a dude, but I feel like a dude who gets to have lesbian sex. So. <laughs> kind of feels like I won the lottery. You know, if God's plan for my life was girl on girl, who am I to question the divine will <laughs> or Lord of Creed? <laughs> it's also, it's one of the things that straight men have said to me for years. The straight men are always telling me, oh, you know, I'm a lesbian too. <laughs> no, some of the men in here have said this to lesbians. Well, I'm a, les I'm a lesbian who's stuck in a dude's body. <laughs> yeah, to which I'm like, well, Freaky Friday, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like my karma's better than yours. And plus, it's like, stuck. you can't claim to be stuck in a dude's body in 2023. You're one GoFundMe away from changing that Audi to an any. <laughs> Upcycling your balls into beef curtains, if that's your truth. <laughs> you did that. Yeah, and that's the thing. So I just, you know, it doesn't, I, I like androgyny. I think, I think this works for it. And I think I'm doing well with androgyny. I think I am. Yeah, I know I am because... My girlfriend's dad, who is an old Catholic dude, okay, before he met me, he looked at my Facebook and he just saw the little thumbnail picture of me and he goes, what is that? <laughs> yeah, he nailed it, you know? <laughs> that was accidentally the wokest thing he could have said about me. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I love, I just love confusing people. I love that. Like, you know what I love is when men follow me into the restroom. <laughs> 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 Happens all the time. <laughs> I get men in trouble. Men follow me to the restroom and then women will do this thing where they'll see me like first like in their peripheral vision when they walk in and then they're like checking the restroom <laughs> sign. I love that. And then like, so one time <laughs> this, I was a restroom where like it had two entrances into the women's restroom. And so I was walking in one direction and this other woman was walking in another direction, but it was like another one of me, you know? <laughs> it was another one of these. Yeah, and so we were like walking in and we saw each other and we were like, wait, what, who am I? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so we all. And so personally, I, I like that. I like, I prefer to know how people see me than to tell you how I want you to see me, okay? I don't really, it doesn't really bother me what gender any of you see me as, okay? The only thing that really matters to me is that you all see me as attractive, so. <laughs> well, clap, clap if you think that I'm attractive. Clap if you think that I'm attractive. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was everyone who mattered. So. Also, that does feel good. I was raised ugly, so thank you for the point. I also do that just to make a little point because I hope you guys all understand it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or whatever. If you just clapped for that, you're gay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to the community. <laughs> Don't wear out the F word. Well, you're in. And that's how I feel about it. And you know, I just want, so publicly, I identify as a woman because that's what the most people are attracted to. I'm just playing the numbers. All right, sexually speaking, being a woman is the seller's market. 
so gender fluid. I'm a gender opportunist. <laughs> And like, I have a friend who has kind of come around to my way of thinking about this. She's de-transitioned now, okay? Yeah, she was born a chick, and then she was living as a dude when I met her, she was taking testosterone. And, and then a few months into our friendship, she was like, you know what? I'm actually gonna be an androgynous woman again. Yeah, I didn't try to convince her of that or anything. It's just, while she was living as a guy, she wasn't having a lot of luck romantically. Well, it turns out, that it's pretty hard to get laid as a five foot three man. <laughs> so, yeah, don't shoot the messenger, y'all. I'm not the one out there not fucking those little nuggets, sorry. My ex boyfriend was five two. I've done my part for the short king community. Thank you. So yeah, so she, one day she stopped taking the testosterone and she changed her Tinder profile back to being a woman. And that weekend, three chicks were fighting over her. <laughs> yeah, she's married to one of them now. I was like, yeah, dude, buddy. Bruh. <laughs> Just man up and be a woman for the pussy. You feel me on that? It's just smart. <laughs> All right, now let's do this. Clap if you are, clap if you don't like sports. Clap if you don't like sports. Right, because sports are for dumb people who don't read, who kind of too stupid to care about. These are her words that she's mouthing, but. All right, but now clap if you do like nature documentaries. Clap if you do. Okay. So I'm noticing a lot of the people who say that they don't like sports do like nature documentaries, <laughs> which I think I find curious. Because if you think about it, at least a third of every nature documentary, we just watch one animal chasing another. <laughs> and then either that animal narrowly escapes, or we watch it being savagely ripped apart. <laughs> so I think you do like sports. <laughs> yeah. You just need yours to be to the death. <laughs> we gotta bring back the Coliseum for you liberals. <laughs> and then we'll see if you're still on board with trans women playing against vagina people. <laughs> if it's to the death. Oh, hey, look, I, the trans sports controversy is like my favorite controversy of all time. <laughs> I'm loving it, okay? And I, I do think it's, I am one of those people who thinks that we should do a separate trans league. Okay, yeah. By which I mean we do trans men on testosterone versus trans women on estrogen and testosterone blockers. Right, let's watch that battle of the sexes play out. We don't even know who'd win. <laughs> let's stop squabbling and find out. And I actually think that it's more complicated than that. I think it depends on, you know, what sport it is. I think it depends on what level it is. But a lot of people you ask them, they're like, no, trans men are men, trans women are women, that's all there is to it. I'm like, okay, but then what about all the non-binary people? Yeah, so I actually asked five non-binary people what they would do, men to women's, how it would be. Interestingly, every non-binary person gave me the exact same answer. Every one of them said, you know, I don't even watch sports. <laughs> That's why we don't bring you up in these <laughs> debates. But my favorite thing about the trans sports debate is just the effect that this has had on conservative men. I don't know how many of y'all are keeping in touch with conservative men, but they are now pounding the table in defense of women's sports. I'm, I'm talking. <laughs> yeah. I did not see this coming. Cause I don't know if, is anyone here old enough to remember three years ago? Cause I am. And the only thing you could get Ben Shapiro to say about women's sports three years ago is that no one will ever care because they're not entertaining enough. And now he tunes into women's college swimming. <laughs> All right. But I do kind of see everyone's point. Because I'm not sure that the ratings for the WNBA are going to be where we need them to be until there really are trannies dunking on dykes out there. So. 
Let's get these women paid. That's when I'll start watching. <laughs> I'm not watching yet. And it's the thing, it's for team sports. I'm like, let's get a little creative. Okay, for, for the WNBA, what if every team gets one trans woman? <laughs> That's fair. That'll be a fun draft season to watch. <laughs> every team gets one trans woman. We call it the Shaquille O'Neal position. And people watch. <laughs> The other thing we could do is like, and maybe the best plan that we could do is a separate trans league, but it's not just a trans league. It's like, yeah, trans men and trans women, but also a lot of intersex conditions that go in there. Also some of the little gay boys and big old lesbians, you know, just kind of all the medium people. And here's why I think that's a good idea. We could actually watch that. You know, queers versus intersex and shit. We might watch that. Everyone will continue to not watch women's sports at all. But they'll be safe. But we might take some of the market share away from the boys. All of the controversies have been fun and I think a little bit blown out of proportion. Do y'all remember the first thing that Republicans thought of when they heard about trans people? The first big controversy that happened was restrooms. Yeah, this, it's just, that is the mentality from these old Republican men where they're like, hey, 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 hey. You can't let penis people go into the women's restroom. That's their one safe space where we don't go raping them. Everyone knows. It's home base rules. Everyone knows. It's not sportsmanlike. You gotta wait out in the woods like the rest of us. And one of them strays from the pack. That seemed to be the mentality. I don't, I don't understand. I don't think we need to separate restrooms by what genitals you were born with. I don't personally think we need to do that. But I don't really want to separate restrooms by gender identity necessarily either. I do like it when there's two different restrooms though. I just want it to be that there's one for clean people. One for the urine and puke folks. It's a simple fix. And then pronouns, that has been a big controversy. Uh, you know, and in 2012 was when one of my first friends went gender neutral. And at the time, they wanted to be called it. We hadn't settled on they, them. So I, I just felt weird about that. I was like, okay, we just reclaimed the word queer. So this is starting to feel weird to me, but I'm like, all right, well, this is my friend Zoe, it's a queer. <laughs> That's what the right side of history looked like in 2012. <laughs> so I think then everyone kind of went was like, well, let's go back to the drawing board. We'll just come up with our own pronouns. So then they came up with Z and C, X, I, E, Z, I, E. I'm like, guys, please don't put X's and Z's in your little pronouns. You sound like Scientologists. We have to present this shit to Republicans one day. Where are the adults? Although someone did make a compelling argument to the, me the other day about Z's and Zer being the best option for singular pronouns. But I realize the real issue that we have with that is that Z's and Zer sounds German. <laughs> we're gonna do it. We're gonna have to forgive the Germans in our hearts. I don't know if we're ready for that. So we've been doing they, them, there for a few years now. It seems to be what we settled on. Um, I mean, I hope so for the sake of all those people with they, them knuckle tattoos, because that'll be them. And a lot of people say, you know, it's, there's a debate over whether it's difficult grammati grammatically to do that. And I'm like, you know what? Half of my friends are non-binary and they're all poly too. So you try keeping up with these stories where you're like, I'm sorry, did they, the couple, suck their Alex's dip? <laughs> or did they, Lex, suck their, the couple's dip? No, Xander sucked their own <laughs> detachable dick. Okay, well, if y'all think that's confusing, I'm friends with a pair of conjoined twins now who both do they, them, and no one ever knows who the hell anything's talking about. <laughs> that one's a joke, but. <laughs>
But if you were conjoined twins, wouldn't you be doing they, them, and be famous on TikTok at this point? How was no one doing that? <laughs> but I have a solution, I think. I think I have the solution when it comes to pronouns, okay? I think what we should do when it comes to all of these little pronouns is we respect everybody's pronouns, no matter what they are. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yes, and then in return, we get the word retard back. So, so much. Thank you so much. I will be running for office one day. <laughs> Pronouns for retards platform. <laughs> I think it's time. I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret actually about the retard. I don't know if y'all have noticed people have started saying retard again. Have y'all noticed that? Clap if you've noticed that it's come back a little bit. Those of y'all who go to comedy shows, maybe. Yeah, pedestrians aren't doing it yet, but com yeah, comedians are starting to say it again. Which, uh, my thing is, I just don't want people to say it too often. You know, it needs, you gotta save it up. You gotta save it up for when it's... Yeah. <laughs> you what? For your mom, is that what you said? No, I say it all the time. You said it Oh yeah, you didn't know it was ever canceled. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we get that a lot too. I just really have a vision of like, okay, do y'all remember the 2016 Republican primary debates? Yeah. Remember Trump was just up there with the zingers and calling people fat and ugly and losers and, and he was getting laughed. The thing is like people were liking it, you know? But if at one point like Jeb Bush had just hit him with a you're a fucking retard. <laughs> that would have that might have had some momentum. You gotta save it up. I'll tell you, I've been telling that joke for a few years, you know, the pronouns for retards thing and I th I is, it does seem to me like that's what's happened with the culture. I think we have kind of almost made that compromise. And it's, and it is like the comedians are saying it, which y'all shouldn't say, don't say it at work. You know what I mean? You don't wrote it. Just let us say it every now and then, okay? I, I try to police us too. I know some of my peers say it way too often, okay? But what happened is during the pandemic, you know when y'all were all staying at home? I, I stayed home in April, in March. But then small businesses outside of Austin were like, will you come save our business by doing a comedy show for us? And we were like, yeah, well, some of us are going to do that. Yeah, we didn't put it on the internet. <laughs> you know, we, didn't, we just went out there and did it. A lot of them were outdoors, not all of them, but a lot of them were <laughs> outdoors. And so that's the thing. We, we all looked around us in May and in June of 2020 at these comedy shows, and we were like, oh, you know who's not here? Anybody who's going to mind if we say retard? <laughs> 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 and I just, I get, I get a little nervous about this, this escalation of canceling words. As a comedian, especially as somebody who really cares about words, I just don't like to see all of these words being taken away from us. Yeah, like at first they came to the word retard, and it seemed mean to fight them on it, and so I said nothing. <laughs> And then they came for the word midget. <laughs> and even though there's no consensus in the dwarf community as to which of the adorable little terms that we should use for them, I'm 5'8", and so I said nothing. <laughs> and then they came for the word faggot. And I'm a faggot anyway, so I get to keep saying it. It's actually kind of more fun that way. And so I said nothing. <laughs> and then they came for the word crazy. And I was like, okay, you crazy retard midget brain faggots. This is America, suck a dick. All right. <laughs> also, in case it's not clear, I identify as a little retarded. So that's why I can say it. I think you all should too. Have we not proved in the last several years of this country that this is a country of barely literate retards? I think it's kind of our word. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, okay, so I have this tiny dog. It's this little four pound chihuahua, and he's actually cute. I, I, I'm great. He's not, I mean, he's not like your chihuahuas who are annoying and yep too much. He's, <laughs> he's like a really good, no, he is. He's so, he's so little, cute, and he's perfect, okay? And so whenever people come up to me, they're like, oh my God, she's so cute. What's her name? And I'm like, oh, his name is Cooper. And they're like, she's adorable. Where did you get her? Like, they continue to she, her, him. <laughs> 
which I don't care how you pronoun uh, animals. I just think it's hilarious that when you're that tiny, it's so hard to get anyone to take you seriously as a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just ask uh, Elliot Page. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's 5'1", for those of y'all who don't know. 5'1", yeah, he's the Tom Cruise of trans men. <laughs> really, he's the Joe Rogan of trans men. <laughs> <laughs> so Joe, Joe and Elliot are so short, there are amusement park rides they can't go on together. <laughs> and I'm a fan of Elliot Page, okay? Yeah, I, I was super into him when he was a chick. I mean, until the end, that got rough. <laughs> I don't know if y'all remember that last haircut, <laughs> but. <laughs> but I have high hopes for him as a boy, you know? I hope he like bulks up and he gets, it, you know, cause I would like to jerk it to him again. That is my, <laughs> that is my goal to have that experience. See, but I need him to bulk up. <laughs> yeah, I just want him to get buff and stuff, you know? Because like at this point in his transition, he really just looks like somebody that Michael Jackson would befriend, <laughs> so. <laughs> Move over, Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> we got a new, there's a new lost boy in town. <laughs> Michael Jackson, by the way, does anybody think that Michael Jackson's innocent? <laughs> All right, yes, I, don't, I mean, I'm pretty sure that he did, but thank God he was a bottom, you know? <laughs> that could have been way worse. If only Cosby had been a bottom, that would have been so much better. I really wish I could do a good Cosby impersonation, but I, I kept trying today. I'm like, oh, 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 what is it? Yeah. It's supposed to be an easy impersonation. Oh, someone just put something in my drink. I can't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be asleep for the next seven to nine hours, I think, if anyone wants to put the jello. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> and I really like fantasizing about the 2023 in which Michael Jackson is still alive. Okay. I love thinking about him just on Oprah's Super Soul Sunday. <laughs> just, Oprah, thank you so much. First of all, I want to take this opportunity to come out to the world today and it's not binary. <laughs> Is there any chance that Michael Jackson's not non-binary in 2023? I'm not binary, well, my pronouns are <laughs> Because from the beginning, I have treated him just like all the other little boys. <laughs> now, he and I are going on a speaking tour together because we found a cause that they both feel equally passionate about. Giving children access to puberty blockers. Children. And these kids don't want to grow body hair. They don't want deep voices. They just want their skin to stay soft. Oh, our puberty bloggers are just a pause button. That's all, just a pause button. They just find me, I need them a little more time. Then again, if any of these kids want to pause puberty forever, I do have a team of doctors with every action. Neverland Ranch. <laughs> we will help them if this country is too big enough to help these kids stay alive and suffer forever. <laughs> now I've heard that some people are worried about the consequences of taking beauty bloggers. I can tell you with 100% certainty that they are safe in the long term. <laughs> Why? I've been on them for the last 50 years. <laughs> Look at me. All right, thank you guys so much for letting me do that. <laughs> Fucked up joke.
Thank you. Thank you. I will just say, I know that that joke is, is pretty fucked up. Um, <laughs> but, it, I, you know, the puberty blockers thing is pretty personal to me. Because I know that if I were a kid today, that I would be on puberty blockers. <laughs> and not even necessarily because of my gender dysphoria. It's just my mom was so cheap. She could have put me on them so I could keep eating for you, Jason Stelly. So, <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much. Y'all have been amazing. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much. And you know what? Follow me on Instagram at Ellen DeGeneres, everybody. <laughs>